guys, welcome to I Run Things. My name is Susie and I am your host. This is the first part of my interview with Heather Jorkinson. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe so you can be notified when the next installment airs on my channel. Hi Heather, how are you? I'm doing very well, Susie. How are you? I'm good. I see you have a different good. background. I know you're on vacation. I do. <laughs> yes, this is not my typical look back here. This is I'm at my parents' house in Wisconsin. I finally get a change of scenery. It's so nice. It's so nice. <laughs> it, looks, <laughs> it looks lovely with the, the green and the, you know, really. My mom knows how to decorate. Yeah. She <laughs> Her. It's always great to go to your parents' house. I mean, when I go to my mom's house, it's always like, I feel like a little girl again, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like they pamper you. It's just a whole different, you don't have to be in charge of doing groceries. <laughs> it's just, right. You know, there's just a few less decisions to make. So it's right, really right. nice. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, so yeah, thank you so much. I, this is making my my day and my week because I've been a fan of yours forever. For oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I actually so remember you came, I, f I remember you commented that you found me through another channel that you were watching. Right. And it was at that point that I actually got quite a few more subscribers. You were one of them. And now I'm like, what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> right. So it was a great, it was a great kind of serendipitous experience. So. Yeah, I think I subscribed to your channel when you had like 250 subscribers. Yeah, yeah. like it doubled it overnight. And I was like, what just happened? What did I do? <laughs> that's when you go and find out, okay, something happened. <laughs> something happened. <laughs> what, what, this, this, this can't be a mistake. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one, you know, wonderful just to wake up one morning and see so many bad updates. It was. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. It was, it was a pretty neat day for me. Yeah. And it's just grown from there. And there's this whole community now that, that, um, and not just, not just the, the folks that watch, but now there's, there's you and there are so many more, uh, you know, running YouTubers out there and kind of sharing their journey and their experiences. And I just love it. I love it so much. Oh, that's awesome. So, I don't know where you've been living if you don't know Heather Jurgensen, guys, but just in case someone doesn't know you, why don't you introduce yourself? Very good. Uh, first, th definitely thank you for having me, Susie. I really appreciate this. Uh, I, I am Heather Jurgensen, running coach, uh, triathlete. I started in triathlon. I moved up uh, into the running ranks. I decided to kind of switch sports a little bit. Um, I kind of work my way up in distance through triathlon. Now I've worked my way up in distance through uh, running as well. And recently, about two years ago or so now, I became a running coach because I found this voice on YouTube that I didn't realize was kind of needed by a lot of folks who are mid to the back, to the back of the pack runners who right. are running as a form of getting fit and running as a form of, you know, I just want to do something good for myself. So I shared my experiences, my mistakes and lessons learned online and it resonated with a lot of people. So the, the YouTube channel uh, the Heather Jurgensen YouTube channel became kind of that voice, like, you're not alone in this. It, it's a very lonely sport, but you're not alone in this. And so once I became a coach, that, those, that, that group, that demographic became, you know, those are the people that I want to coach because everybody deserves a coach. Right. Uh, through, through all of this, I found uh, Run Disney, and it's, it's a re recreational race series for me. Uh, I do run for time and I run hard, but I don't do that at Run Disney. I play hard. <laughs> <Run Disney. laughs> I see that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's, it's a lot of fun. And um, that's actually where I met so many of my friends now. And I have friends from all over the world. Uh, and we kind of converge on Disney and we run these races together as, as a group and, and as friends to support one another. So that's what, uh, what I do as a coach. I'm on YouTube. Uh, I do have a podcast, Runners Without Limits, and uh, that right. one has been a lot of fun with one of my athletes, uh, Jen Sorensen. 
And uh, she and I have been doing this for just over a year now, and it's been a ball. So we're having a really good time with that. Right. And I have to say, the um, when you have a YouTube channel, if you want, like you could listen to the person on the YouTube channel when you're running, but you're going through a lot of data. So I really appreciate mm -hmm. you have a podcast because I can actually just listen to it <laughs> without blowing right. my, <laughs> you know. Right skyrocketing my bill with Verizon, which otherwise yeah. I have there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a journey and I, it's been great for me to follow you along mm -hmm. is I've never said this, but I started my YouTube channel because of you. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, so the first YouTube channels running YouTube channels I subscribed to was yours first and then mm -hmm. restaurants. Gerald, mm -hmm. you know. But I think it was because you mentioned him, maybe I found him or YouTube, you know, suggested videos, but you were first. But then I started thinking, well, I could do this. <laughs> so you inspired me. <laughs> I mean, uh -huh. <laughs> you are, but you inspired me to start my own YouTube channel because it was so um, relatable. The content mm -hmm. you were putting out was so like, other YouTube channels out there are high up here. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was here. Like you said, you know, middle of the pack runner. And there's so many people who are so fast. But I'm not like that. I have aspirations, like, like you said, but I'm not up there. So you were the person that said, okay, she's doing it. I can relate to what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Well, I can do this too. So. So thank you, because, uh, you know, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel if it wasn't for you. <laughs> oh, that warms my heart, too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You know, and it, it, that's actually something that I'm trying to do a lot of messaging around now, too, because I've been doing this now. I've been doing the, the YouTube channel now for four years, and right. it's a lot of content. And I've done several vlogging challenges where I'm vlogging every day throughout the month. And... So I have a lot of videos out there. Not all of them are great. Let's just say that for right now. <laughs> <You> <laughs> Some of them are a little cringy. <laughs> going back, you know, like saying, let's oh, look okay. at my old YouTube videos. <laughs> Remember this one? We don't talk about this one anymore. <laughs> no, um, that I've done this for so long that it, it's, I'm finding, especially now in, in all of this crazy time with everything that's going on this year, uh, I'm finding, I'm kind of drying up creatively and because my focus has changed so much, uh, you know, I've got, you know, I'm teaching my kid at home. You've probably had to experience this as well. Right. I'm teaching my kid at home. Um, we're traveling. We just had, a, <laughs> we had water damage in our house. It was crazy. Just this past couple of weeks, it was just like the last thing I'm thinking of is creating video. Right. And I want to encourage everyone to not just get out there and go running but document your journey because there's power in that there is motivation in that because you can go back to those first videos and say oh wait i remember when this was challenging for me and now it's no longer challenging for me or this is the period of my life it's kind of like keeping a video diary and right. whether or not you actually choose to post it online, you know, you can just show it to your friends. Uh, but if it's, even if it's just for you, it's a way for you to look back on your journey that maybe the written word isn't your forte. It's certainly not for me. Uh, but the, it, it allows for a peek into the past and it right. tells a story. And as you go, that story unfolds and you see, and it helps define who you are and what you want, not just as a runner, but as a human being. And I think it's, it's just such a great journey. And I'm so glad that you picked up a camera and started doing that. And I highly encourage Thank you. so many people to do that because it's, it's kind of fun. It's a little scary, but it, it really does show other people, oh, I'm not alone. I'm right. not alone here. I have these experiences too. You just said exactly what I was thinking. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that I'm not alone in all of this. But that's that I think we all need to hear that we're not alone. So. Right. And it's only scary the first couple of videos. Once <laughs> once you post them out there, it's like, okay, I did it. Now I because I have to 
stick with it, you know? It's a decision I made. Um, so I kind of know your story with triathlon and then going into running, but I really want to know, now that you can go back in time, was running what you expected it to be? You know, it's a, that's an excellent question. I will say no. And here's why I think a lot of, a lot of people who pick up running as a sport, as a way to be fit, as a way to get healthy that haven't run before, or, you know, we, we like to joke that my sport of running was your sport's punishment, right? That, <laughs> that we had to, you know, soccer practice, we didn't get our goals. So we have to, had to run around the field three times or whatever it was. It was that punishment piece. Right. So we reached, I, I was part of that, like that tennis running was, was my punishment in, you know, 95 degree heat in Northern Wisconsin. So we, we had to run and I wasn't, I would never have called myself a runner as, as a, someone who chooses that sport. Right. So once I came around to running through triathlon, because in order to get from the bike to the finish line, you have to run. Right. I didn't enjoy training for that piece of the sport. Swimming came so easily. The cycling wasn't easy, but it was comfortable and running was never comfortable. So there was a moment where my whole, it, it literally was one moment that my whole attitude shifted over it. And it was through, um, it was through another group that it was another mother runner actually, that I found a community of moms because it was right after I became a mom that we're not trying to be cute all the time. We're not trying to, you know, throw down PRs every time. We're just trying to keep our sanity right. and, and keep our mental health in check in this, you know, in this motherhood period where, you know, all of a sudden it's not about you anymore, but you still need that time. Cause if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. So running wasn't about going out and running as hard as I could for three miles. It was about going out and finding peace and recentering myself and making it a mental, uh, mental thing that was good for me as often as I possibly could. I went for a run this morning, um, for the first time in, since Saturday, it's been four days now. And it was exactly what I needed. Like you, you kind of get to a point where like, if I don't go running, I may hurt some, someone. Right, else. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. no. So to answer that question, no, I don't think it was what I expected. And I'm glad, I'm grateful for that. Uh, so it, it keeps me going out there day after day. Right. What would you like to accomplish with your running? Do you have, because I know you were training for Chicago or you were trying to, you mm -hmm. don't know if, if it's going to happen, but um, what are your like goals for the next year? You know, uh, as often as I can, you know, to, to kind of back up a little bit. Yes, I was training for Chicago. Um, it has not yet been canceled as of this recording. However, I, I have let it go. Um, a friend of mine who was also training for it, she said, uh, uh, I'm breaking up with it before it breaks up with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good like, way to put it. <laughs> that's a really good way to put it. So she's yeah. kind of let it go. I've, I've let it go. I'm not in a training plan right now. Like a lot of people are expecting it to go off. Um, regardless of what Chicago decides, I won't be running it this year. I've just made that decision. There's too much going on. I believe going into marathon training, you should be 100% healthy and 100% ready for it, and life needs to be boring, and right. none of those things are the case right now. So I'm letting Chicago go. Uh, I will likely defer to next year if that's an option, and um, I want to try to PR. I really want to try to PR. I'm not getting any younger. Marathon is not my favorite distance, but I do want to see. I've only done one standalone marathon. Uh, I would like to do at least one more. Uh, and see if I can PR and see if uh, I still have some speed in my legs. 
If that's the case, I am signed up for the Walt Disney World Half Marathon as a single race. And if that goes off, then I want to try to PR that. I want to try to go for time for the first time in a Disney race on that one. As far as overall not time-related goals, I want to keep doing this for as long as I possibly can. So I, I have, you know, I train by heart rate and I keep things nice and slow. If you look at my Strava data, you're like, wow, she's, she's really slow. I think slow is a four letter <laughs> word, but I, you know, I, I live in this zone one zone two, but I can throw down a pretty hard 5k for me. And that I've set three PRs really in the last two years in my mid forties, that's actually a really good indicator of things to come. And I want that to continue to be the case. So putting the running as a mental, as a mental break for me is the one thing I want to keep that for as long as I can. The other thing is that I really do need to get stronger. I mean, what runner doesn't need yeah. to work on, yeah. <laughs> on their cross training and their running strength so that I want to keep, I want to keep working on that as well. So which race is your, well, Ooh. I think I know the answer to this, but which I think I know where this is your going. Favorite, <laughs> your favorite race. Oh, you know, there, there are so many categories for that, right? Um, I have to, there, there will always be a special place in my heart for the Disney races, mostly because of the community that has come up out of that that right. I have made some of my best friends in the world uh, through Disney and through that experience that um, without it, I wouldn't have the circle of friends that I do. So um, I actually have to put my phone on mute because we're, we're in this big text thread. It's like, okay, God, right. give me a minute. Um, <laughs> so, so there's this, um, this community there. On top of that, uh, I would say that um, some of my favorite races, one of them is, is uh, the Boulder Boulder 10K, is uh, just a big street party in up in Boulder, Colorado, and it is. And you've uh, run I think it. it should be on. I've run yeah. it four times, uh, for in a variety of ways. It was my son's first 10K one year. I try. I ran it, ran it for time one year. Actually, I ran it for time two years, um, and it it's just this big, you know, 10K street party. And I love it. It's such a great experience. And I, I believe it should be on everybody's bucket list. Um, it's funny. There are a lot of races that I, I feel like I've done. I, I put them away and I kind of put them in their own little box and put them on the shelf. And every once in a while, I'll pull them back out again. Um, I enjoyed the Wonder Woman 5K that I just kind of did on a whim last year. Uh, the New Orleans half marathon with rock and roll. That was amazing. Um, Beat the Blurch is its own kind of fun. I've been with that video. <laughs> <laughs> I told my it husband, was, I want to do this one. This has to be so much fun. <laughs> it really was. And it's, and the, the scenery is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's up in the woods in, in Seattle and it is absolutely gorgeous. So uh, it was, uh, that one was a lot of fun. Um, just, races that have character and I've never done an Abbott world major. And that was what I was hoped to check off my list this year. But, um, I, you know, there are just, I find those races that have a little bit, bit of character, a little bit of uniqueness to them. Uh, many of them do. And, you know, my bucket list keeps getting longer and then I check those off the bucket list and then I add more to it. And, right. um, so I, I, if I had to pick a favorite, I don't know if I could, but, I, I definitely have a, a soft spot in my heart for Disney and Boulder Boulder. So. So I wanted to talk also about coaching. Um, Cause I do believe when I look at your videos that your coaching philosophy is different to other, I mean, every coach is different. Yeah. But I think your philosophy is always, well, this is what I, when I see your videos, this is what comes through, mm -hmm. which I could, but I think you, number one, worry about your athletes not getting injured. Mm -hmm. Number two, you worry about them having fun and mm -hmm. give them enough work to keep them engaged and challenged, but not overdoing it. Like you want them to have fun. Right. Um, and I think you truly genuinely care about 
them staying in this, keep, keep running, like staying yeah. on, st on this sport. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted you to talk to us more about your coaching philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, all of that is spot on. And, and I think what I, you're doing a good job with your videos. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I really enjoy having, you know, when you say fun versus work, I feel like when, especially with my athletes, my, the clients that, that I'm coaching right now, I will offer them up a, a workout and they'll look at it and their eyes get big and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but I do, right? And I want them to kind of go into that workout just a little bit scared, a little bit worried. Can I actually do this? And then they do it and whoa, what, what did I just do? Look what I just did. So to me, most of the time, it's not a surprise. In fact, none of the time is it a surprise. If they don't hit the targets, it's usually because you know the weather's bad or they were feeling not great or whatever it is. I'm not disappointed if they don't nail it. I'm excited for them when they do because there's fun in that accomplishment. There's fun in that hard work. So once you start to see what you're capable of, it spurs you on to do more. And so I don't expect any one of my clients to want to be cute ever. I really, or, you know, do whatever, whatever big thing, think of a big thing. I don't expect that of them. What I expect of them is that they want to do better for themselves and they don't have to prove a thing to me, but if they want to get better, do better. And I'm not saying faster. Notice I'm not saying faster. I'm saying better, more efficient, healthier in all of the ways that we as runners want to do that thing. So I find it, I, what excites me about being a coach is when I see someone accomplish something that they didn't think they could accomplish before. And that makes my heart sing because I know that that runner is a runner for life. And they're just going to keep doing it. And if, when you, you know, talk about injury, like I don't want them to get injured because as soon as they're injured, the wind goes out of their sails. They start to lose a little hope. They've got to take some time off and, and recover and rest. And I don't want them to be in that place. Sometimes we have to learn that lesson. We have to get, right? We have to get injured to learn the lesson. But I, I don't want them to be injured so frequently that they believe that running isn't for them. Right. So when I coach, my philosophy, my favorite philosophy is heart rate training, that you're in zones, that you are, you know, that the 220 minus your age isn't accurate, but that there are ways that you can find your best zones for you and your physiology and body chemistry. So that is my favorite way to coach. I do coach other philosophies like um, uh, Galloway, the run, walk, run system. A lot of the, the runners from Run Disney come in through Galloway and, and it's a perfectly valid way to do it. It teaches me a lot as a coach because it's a different philosophy, but I just love all like run, or excuse me, train slow to run fast. Train slow right. to race fast. That is my favorite philosophy because it takes so much pressure off. Right. And especially, you know, for the new runner who feels like every time they run, they have to run as hard as they can until they're until they die. And then they, they stop and they get hurt and then they have to do it all over again. I want to teach those novice runners that slow, slow to start out, and you can do oh, so much with slow running and it will surprise you on race day when it counts the most. Cause it, you know, training is a great, is great, but it's the race results that are going to count, you know, right. in, in the grand scheme of things. So I think that, that is my philosophy and that is what I love to coach. And so uh, I think it's, I think it's great just to see those aha moments with my right. clients. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you can be notified when the second part of this interview airs on YouTube. Thanks for watching.